last episode we are again building lures and it's another build for a youtuber it's another lot of corn cob lures and i've said this before i'm not doing heaps of these because they're so much hard work so when i make them they're for me or people that i want to say thanks to or or show my appreciation to so obviously the first one went to marling uh to nate from marling baits nate marling right the first one went to nate you've probably seen that video by now and the reason for that is absolute entertaining uh channel that has been an absolute inspiration to us in the lure building sense so these two are going to go to my other favorite youtuber so Brody moss from young bloods uh has a sensational channel and he hasn't inspired us in lure building but he has inspired us in life in general i'm not working i'm just making videos and a few lures to sell from home and we don't have heaps of money and sometimes you just wonder if all the hard work is worth it and Brody's channel has really made me realize that it is and made me happy in what we have his channel is an inspiration it's entertaining just enjoyable to watch you get a laugh out of it and it's amazing to see something different the other reason i want to send it to him too is that i can make all of these lures and fish them as much as i wanted and i'm never going to be able to cat a wahoo a mackie a dolphin fish um a tuna or anything like that i'm never going to be able to catch one of those big uh ocean saltwater pelagic species fish on one of these lures i don't have a boat i don't have access to the water i wouldn't know where to go looking for them a freshwater inland fisher so i thought it would be epic to see if Brody wants to throw these or not that's up to him but it would be amazing to see one of those big fish caught on a corn cob lure uh, that would be pretty much unseen that's what this is about that's what this video is about we're sending these to him if he wants to use them if you're watching Brody if you want to use them use them if you don't want to use them that's that's cool you don't have to it's just for us to say thank you for the encouragement and inspiration that you've been to us you actually have a way greater impact than you realize i think and i walked to the coffee shop this morning got a coffee and i thought to myself life's pretty great and a lot of that attitude comes from your channel watch video last night we caught massive uh wahoo on the boat which was sick um yeah so thank you thank you very much so what we're gonna do is jump into that right now these are the first two corn cobs i've done this way i recalled these while they were green before i dried them at all so i cooked them in the oven got the corn off them and then recalled them before we dried them with the hopes that it would shrink around the core and be a more solid bond and it, it's kind of worked but as you can see one of them is split and i'm going to use that to my advantage these are going to be a surface popper and oh, like a stick or jerk bait right so what i'm going to do is actually put some lead in here on the ball get on the ball kingsley get on the ball clamps and stuff at my disposal Roll now, bitch. Hit it with a heat gun, the resin melts. Well, liquefies more and goes down through there. Let's hit this over here out of the way. And like that set, before we do the resin, where we put it in the vacuum chamber and have the resin encased through everything and make it solid. And what that will do will give this a def definite bottom a definite belly because that will have lead in it sink that way i know the resin makes it sink to one side but that'll give it a real good defined uh base we're going to sit it in this way we're going to build a chamber this way and sort of go in the pipe like normal then you're in the chamber this way pour a color up about halfway pour a different color on the top with micro spheres in it which are little spheres full of air which will make the top half buoyant hopefully the vacuum doesn't pull them all out uh i don't know if this will work or not but hopefully it'll allow this to still not be like a super fast sink lure it'll give it a bit more buoyancy so that's what that one is that one's a a stick bait this one's a surface popper 
Um, I'm just going to let the resin decide which is the base on this one. I don't want to add extra weight to it. The difference is bolster in this one, so it will be more buoyant from the start. This is the Tasmanian Oak Core. Let's get the lead glued in, and we'll come back to it when we're ready for uh, building resin box. I've never done one like this. This is the tank I've made. You can see the weights. That's why it's in that tank, so that I can make sure when the buoyancy level is poured second, it's on top. Otherwise, you have issues. So... I'm hoping that works, it's just hot glued together. Uh, so that's that one. This one here, we've got literally just put a dollop of glue and standard as pl plumb as we can from looking at it. Give it a bit more of a touch. I'm gonna put some microspheres in these colors too. They might float to one end. We'll find out, I guess. Then, this one here, we just seal up this crack down each side. I found out in the past that it absolutely pays to make sure you've sealed every possible gap. Because once you mix the epoxy and start pouring it, if it starts flowing out, it is a nightmare to try and stop. Nothing will stick after the wet epoxy is on it. I don't mean nothing. Blot it over. I got a leak and it took me heaps to get it blocked. As I mentioned, once the resin gets on stuff, nothing wants to stick to it. And you wipe it and wipe it and then try and stick something. I got the hot glue gun back out and I struggled big time and the camera went flat. I finally got it done, but I didn't want to mess around too much as it had been a little bit. So I've already vacuum chambered it. And this is what I've got at the moment. So it's going to be interesting. What happens is this bubbles all the way through, so when you vacuum it, it all pulls up. It actually blends the colours from the bottom up. So you can see blending up through, but it's still very distinctly purple on top and the other colour underneath. So it'll be interesting to see what that comes out like. We're going to pour this one, which is the normal way to do it. Hopefully this one doesn't <laughs> leak. Uh, I've picked colours. Colors I've never done, colors I've not done before. So green I have done before, but it's gonna be green and red with pink. Vacuum's going, so the bubbles pulling out of it. That's the extra one already. Brody's there. Now because it's so close to the top, and the resin's a bit thick, so the bubbles grab it and lift it. I'm gonna have to keep letting some air in to stop it from just overflowing resin everywhere. Like that. 
let it suck again. I won't put the bubbles back into the corn because the resin's filling it. The air's not going to go back through the resin. It just means it will take a lot longer to get the desired effect because I have to keep cutting the pressure. Demolded Brody's corn cobs. Doesn't look like much on here, but this pattern looks sick. So I'm hoping around the corn cob that looks cool. And obviously pink and green on this one doesn't look too bad either. We'll see how it comes up. Now I'm gonna mark the center of this one. I'll go and zim the ends off this like I've done there. Zim, zim, zing the ends off this. Mark the centers and then we'll go to lathe and uh, start playing with them. The reason for this, is to try and get as close to the center of the corn cob as possible, not the center of the timber, because the core in the corn cob is not centered to the corn cob. I've mentioned that before, but I'm trying to get as close as I can so that you get an even showing of uh, corn pattern all the way around. Otherwise you end up with one side looking cool and the other side looking like a happy. Corn cobs everywhere. What are you doing, cat? <laughs> cat hiding up here behind the lathe. Meow meow. What are you doing? You have to move, mate, because you're going to get lathe. going to make a racket and get all over you. Look at the dust in there. What are you doing up there in the dust, hey? This is from another series. Got some others over there. I've got some finished and I've got corn cob lures everywhere. under here we're at the float test stage oh this one actually floats awesome oh, that's the bottom of that 100 percent there's no doubt that that's it that's the bottom of that one. I'm going to go start shaping these things. The popper stays symmetrical. I'm going to cut the front off square and then we're just going to shape it uh, onto the angle we want on the sander. And the back just needs to be shaped around it so we'll cut it off square as well. This, I've marked the bottom. I'm going to probably start shaping it on the sander, I think. So, roughly, starting to look like something. Um, unfortunately, I've hit the lead there, so I'd, I would have taken a bit more out, but I don't really want to start revealing lead. So, that's kind of seen that undone. 
and yeah I think it's mainly just shaping with uh, sandpaper now just to try and keep that and and try and smooth these around and make it all tie in um, it's going to be fairly chunky it's fairly heavy but it'll work out in the salt for sure it's very solid I'm getting good at the drilling from each end thing. We've got this one through and we've put a pilot for the hook point in the belly. The marked the spots there. This one, I've done the pilot and I've drilled from both ends, but uh, you can see that we're just a little bit short of meeting the center. I don't have a longer 2.5 mil drill bit. So what I'm gonna do, and I don't know how well this will work, is use a straight bit of the wire in the drill and just try and force it through because it's only about so far it should if I've got my lines right it should line up so we're going to give that a crack Next step, this hole needs to be about five mil. This hole needs to be about five mil for the loop to work. The reason I use the drill press for these belly holes is that I can set this plate. All right. So, essentially, can't go through the lure, but I can get the maximum depth possible. So if I do that, all right, it shouldn't go through the lure. So what I'll do is I've got a carve a cup into the cup face popper. A bit. Maybe this one to start and then I might go to a smaller. Actually, let's go to a smaller one to start. That'll do us. Oh. A little longer than a few minutes later. Oh, yeah, good. We've just been staring at nothing for 30 minutes. I'll probably edit that out. Cup face. I've never done that before and I'm actually pretty happy with how that's turned out. Uh, as per normal for the center toe point, we're gonna do a two-way twist. So a loop this way and then a loop that way. The loop out here will be in line with the lure and that will make the loop inside the opposite so the through wire can go through it. So what we're gonna do is start with a little bit of excess. We start with the inside one. So I'm going to go around there and I'm just using circlip pliers as I have done in the past. Now this is the one for the inside so we want it to be narrow. We get the pliers and we just kind of squash it in. Give it a twist. Try and keep it tight. Terrible example of that right there. Round twice will be fine because it's fully encased in epoxy inside of there. Snip her off with the side cutters. You want it around a bit more square and then that should fit in there. Another bit of wire because this will determine where the toe point sits. Just sort of trial and error moving it in and out until you've got it in the loop. Right, that's got it. What that gives me now is where I want my toe point. So I want my toe point to hang right there. Pull that out. And before we move it, so we don't lose it, that's it there. That's our toe point. We want to make sure 
that way opposite to that loop. That. And you want to go around, come around on yourself as tight as you can. Again. Use your pliers to get that in there. Oh, should be able to sit that in like that, and that's somewhere near where you want it. You can adjust it after you've got it through with the wire and whatnot. I want the wire relatively straight, and it's definitely not. Now, all you have to do is put this end in the drill. Take this end. Put it in the bias. That. Lock your eyes down. Bend it over so that it's not trying to pull out. Put the blade on it. Don't trip over your chair. And just twist it. <laughs> That. That. Boom. Straight bit of wire. Okay, so that's hooked. So that's exactly where it's going to sit. I'm pretty happy with that. So, the front one wants a toe point, obviously, pretty neat and pretty close. So, give yourself plenty of wire so you've got a fair bit for. Um, to make a nice toe point and try and get that as tight as you can. Now it's the toe point's actually in the cup. <clears throat> it's just centered, you, where you tie on center, just a, it's just above center, but the actual shaft of the lure is below center. So what that should do is pull the top up and as it comes through the water, that cup should really make it break the surface of the water and push that water out that's how they're supposed to work obviously now this one's going to be a little bit more difficult because i just don't have the room so it's going to have to sit out and i've got to tie it on here which is the real challenge so we have to bring it past sideways battery went flat wife came home from work and I went to town with her and just smashed a just smashed a HSP which was delicious so we're back here and I think I was tying this one when I was tying this one when the battery went flat so it's tied so that one's ready to get some uh, resin and whatnot into so that's that one. So this one here, what we're gonna do, and I'm not gonna show you every step because I've just done it on the popper. We're gonna twist up a center hook hanger. We're going to pull uh, this wire out and put uh, the right length wire in. And with this one, I'm gonna twist the front up. We've already got this concave in here. That's from the, <coughs> that's from the lathe. So that's the point that the lathe was pushing into. So that's already in there. I'm gonna tow the, I'm gonna tie the toe point because then I can sit up where I want it, mark where I want the back one to bend, and then I can push the toe point into that um, concave, which will give me a bit more tie, a uh, bit more room to tie the back one, and then slide it back where I want it before we glue it all in place. So uh, we'll be gluing it with epoxy. So that's where we're up to with this one now. So we've got. This one to here, which I'm pretty happy with. And you can see it's fairly tight on either end. And that's because I utilized that hole after tying this point to push it in and give me room to tie this one, then slide it back. That's fixed tight. So obviously the loop inside there is through there, the same as that one. So if a fish grabs this, it has to pull this loop or this loop in through and out when this one's resined in and that's all resined in. It's not gonna happen. It's just not physically possible with that line through there and that loop around there for that to pull out. And I've explained this in other videos, but what that does is that gives you um, a line through 
through a, a solid line with this one looped through without having to cut through and wreck the finish on this lure. So um, we've got those two at that point. I'm gonna get some resin now, get them uh, fixed in, fill any holes up and uh, put them on the turner and then we'll give them a clear coat and see what they do in the water without hardware. So mix it up with a bit of pink, try and get it somewhere near what it needs to be. We're gonna fill the belly hole. Got the heat gun because heating epoxy makes it more viscous. So it'll run. And we covered that about 4,000 times, but in case you're new, resin everywhere. So, I've got that up there spinning around. Hopefully, I've got a couple of clamps trying to hold the wire where I want it. Hopefully that works. Then we'll have to reassess that because it'll need more resin. So, we're going to mix up something for this. We'll do the bottom and the back and we will pour the front as a separate one, try and really fill that right up. It's the next morning and this stuff has set sunk a little bit in there but it's hidden pretty well the back needs a touch up and the front actually needs some in this one the back has come up really good the center has sunk a little bit but it, again it's pretty well hidden so it needs a touch up but the front needs to be filled so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna mix some up with some denatured alcohol and thin it down so it runs a bit better I'm gonna hang that one on a hook because it's cup face and fill it in there and just heat, keep hitting it with the heat and let it drizzle all the way down through the center. And then this one, I'm going to fill the front, focus on the front a little bit. And then once I've got the front pretty well right, I'm gonna put that back on the rotisserie and try and top up this center bit that kept sinking. some blank irrigation system come back this stuff was dry so I've given it a light sand just to smooth any transitions between the original and the coating the front's actually looking pretty good back to uh, the little popper is looking pretty good pick some eyes mark them out draw some holes and glue them in Laura I've seen bigger eyes look better. Bigger looks better than smaller. These are just plain round. These shaped ones look way better. So I don't really go with them. It's been a couple of days and oh, you guys went flat during what we were doing last. So what we're looking at now is some lures that are ready to swim test. Eyes glued in and clear coated and they are looking so good.
especially that one. This one looks pretty good too. What I'm going to do, what I'm about to do, is swim test them as is without hooks, just to see what they're doing before I add hook. If they are absolutely useless as they are, I don't think adding hooks is going to save that. If they don't seem to be working because they're spinning, hooks might help. But I just want to see where we're at before I go and add hooks. It floats well. Okay, without hooks this already works. Now, if it doesn't sink too much with hooks. This is a heavy lure. Oh, yeah, it's going to sink. Oh, no, look at that. What a rocket. Going to make hooks on both the lures, bring them back and test them. But I've got a little bit of confidence after that trial run without hooks, so. So, I've gone with owner ST66s, uh, and I've already forgotten what sizes they are, with owner number five, 60 pound rated split rings. So obviously these three are the same, and then I've got a big one on the front of this one here. Solid hooks that are gonna hold up to a lot of hurt. So let's give them a go. Does it still float with the hooks on? Yeah! That's a bloody bonus. Oh, and it works better. Oh, yes. That's awesome. Look at that. Hope it's a good size, something different. But there's uh, little lure number one that's going, going to you. Uh, hopefully, you can get something on that. It just doesn't float, so adding hooks won't help that. Let's see what it does for the action. Oh, yes! Yes! Look at that! Uh oh, oh no. The bottom of the pool. Sort of evened out the weight a little bit, having a bigger hook on the front. Oh, yeah. So far, this is the coolest lure I've made in the corn cob um, series. In the corn cob series. And the action on it in my pool works. So, when you cast this out into the ocean, it is going to work awesome. And honestly, um, I really hope you're interested in these Brody and give them a run. Um, I think that'd be something pretty cool to see. Uh, homemade Aussie corn cob lure sent to a uh, crazy big YouTuber and then catching a fish on it. I think that'd be pretty cool. I'm actually really happy with the finish and the, the finish and the style of this lure. Um, uh, probably my favourite work so far. Anyway guys, that's it for me. I'm going to give it another clear coat. But you've seen what the finished product looks like. That's really just to strengthen it up. And then they're going to go in the mail off to Brody. So hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully they get there safe and Brody likes them. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Hope you're all well. Thanks very much for watching and catch you in the next one.